question. And what we're going to cover in the second module is uh, about what is the F function looks like uh, in the linear regression models. And in essence, in the linear regression models, we are representing Y as a widget linear summation of the X feature variables. All right, let's just go to see a concrete example. So just to review uh, what you have, when X is just a single variable and uh, we represent f function as fx equals wx plus d. And then what it's corresponding to uh, geometrically? Uh, geometrically, it just corresponding to a line in the xy space. So x is the horizontal axis, y is the, uh, the vertical axis. And then we, every, uh, so all this, uh, function form wx plus b representing a line. Here w, uh, here b means just, uh, it's called intercept, it's just y x equal to zero, and that's the, uh, just the bias term of y. And w represent when you have one unit of change in the x, I mean you change, uh, you, you go right of x into uh, at one step, and then x will increase, will increase uh, w steps. So at W essentially is the slope of your line. All right, so, uh, all right, so let's make it very concrete. So, so this is just a um, made up example and which people always use. So assuming you are trying to figure out what's the relationship of your rent and versus some variables. So uh, the sensible variable, uh, sensible, feature properties to representing your, um, uh, your, your rented house can be maybe the size of the house, the living area. So that's maybe a pretty popular um, X. So, um, and then, so this is the case X equal to the R and then exactly as we uh, showed before, FX, uh, a linear relationship means FX equals to double X plus B. Um, when there are two variables and that it's exactly corresponding to a line in this x, y uh, space. And when there are two variables, for example, there are locations, there's also living uh, the size, and then you need to write out, um, not just only W and B because there are two, right? So we normally write out the F or the predicted Y as Y equals two, theta zero plus theta one plus theta two, um, or theta, theta zero plus um, theta one x one and theta two x two. So this is, this exactly means y is a weighted sum of different x features for my current input. Yeah, so what does this, um, what are the points actually um, geometrically uh, match uh, representing in this uh, x1, x2, and y space, which is exactly a, a plane, a linear plane and looks like uh, in this shaded, shaded plane. And we're trying to match all those red points to look for this shaded linear plane that can explain the relationship of, relationship of x1, x2, and y the best. So this is uh, it geometrically, this uh, linear summation of x looks like in the arts, in the 1D case, and also in the 2D case. All right, so now we know um, it's the specific f function, we are using in the linear supervised regression is this four. And this is in fact, not just uh, like limited to only X2, uh, only X, there's only two variables, uh, two features. I can have even more. So for example, in this case, I, it's not just um, location. It can also add in like distance to the campus, number of bedrooms, so on and so forth. And we normally see the feature uh, X inputs are from some called RP space, which means uh, this is a more generic generalized notation, right? So, which means we assume 
fx equals to theta zero plus theta one x one plus plus onto theta p uh, maybe xp. So so no matter so this p normally representing the number of features we use to represent our samples. All right, so a general form. Now let's go on. I don't like my previous the sum notation. Um, what we normally write is this much concise vector matrix multiplication form. So again, so hopefully you still remember how to represent a matrix, uh, a vector. So in this class setting, when we see a vector, we normally means it's a column vector. Column vector means it's very narrow, right? So in this case, so this is actually p plus one times one. So um, hopefully you're comfortable with this. All right. And then this summation form can be nicely represented in a much shorter notation, which I'm representing x as a vector and theta also as a vector. And then this weighted linear summation form can be just representing as in the product between x vector and theta vector. So in this case, there's also a slightly um, changes because I'm representing my x vector. My current x is, um, yeah, so let me represent x also as a column vector. So by default, all of the vectors we talk about is a, a column vector. So the first is one, the second is x1, x2, onto xp. So this is my x vector, the vector form. And then this summation, let's see. So I hope you still remember how to do uh, in the product. The inner product of this really representing, so this is x transposition, right? When this x ve vector transpose, it means into a row wise. So column vector transpose into a row. So this equivalent to one x1, x2 onto xp. This is x transposition and then times theta. Theta is that column vector right here. I'm going to just copy it here. Theta zero, theta, two, uh, theta, theta zero, theta one onto theta p. All right, so let's see uh, how do we do this inner product. The inner product is just, let me use a um, laser. Laser. Hmm. Okay, so no, no, very good. Just move to cancel that. Hmm. Okay, so um, I'm not going to use laser anymore. So, so I hope you understand it now because this this uh, row vector and the column vector when they product together, which exactly give me this. Uh, of course, this, this goes to theta p x p. And they just equals to each other. And you can, the, the vector vector uh, in the product, also it's, you can switch sides. So x transpose theta, equivalent to theta transpose x. All right, so um, yeah, this bit almost a repetition what I uh, just put there, uh, but just more clarification, x zero, I mean, I'm representing this as x zero, which is a uh, norm scalar one. And this whole reformulation just make it very easy uh, a concise notation form to represent my fx, uh, the relationship of y and x. 
I will talk about why do we prefer this in the last part of today's uh, section. So why? It's just a change of notation, right? Why do we want this instead of the plus, plus, plus formulation? All right, so uh, I think this page is, uh, yeah, so this page is, again, um, just to let you be aware. So sometimes we write in the product also as the two bracket. So this is exactly x transposition theta equals theta transpose x. It's just a different way to write the same uh, operation in the product among two vectors. Okay. All right, so now we move to um, define. So we already know the form a concise notation vector-based formulation of y uh, from x. Now let's see, um, how do we do the training? Again, so let's come back to the two modes. Um, the first mode is the training mode. And in the training mode, we actually went over this, uh, this piece of code, right? So we have uh, in the, the fit function, Yeah, so we have the fit. Uh, yeah, the, so how do we even fit? I mean, so again, let's try to review what we learned uh, in the first, sec, uh, the second class. So the training data includes a multiple samples, and they are x1. They're normally representing as x1 uh, vector, x2 vector, because they are different samples. We just put them as, we just uh, uh, stack them together, and this normally gives me a matrix. Um, so this is p-dimensional because all the training examples are described as a p-dimensional uh, feature representation. And then together, this gives me a matrix n times p. So this is my x-train. And then the other y, it's also, you can also stack all the different y together, y1, y2, onto yn. This give me a n times one uh, vector. And this is actually the x-train and the y-train. This, in fact, is exactly how your x train and y train um, stored inside the um, that the code when we use the secular. And and the way to look for uh, in the one dimensional case is W and B. In the uh, p dimensional case is the theta. We minimize the cost or loss function, something called L. Um, and it representing the differences between the y and the true y and the predicted fx on those available uh, training data. We normally write this as this formula, and the L um, has two inputs. And uh, yeah, so let's actually use n as the number of samples. And then I'm taking a summation of the errors mix on each of the training sample. And that error is defined by the L function. And the L function takes two input, fxi and yi. Okay, so now the question is, what is the L function? So uh, specifically for the regression case, um, we the most popular L function, um, it's in fact uh, something called SSE, sum of squared error. And the whole goal is to search for the optimal theta that minimize this SSE uh, cost function. So we normally use J theta actually to represent it. Just, um, yeah, it's, it's just a convention. People use it like J theta to representing this as a summation. Again, sum, sum over all the training samples. And then the specific L is just, fxi minus the yi, then take a square. So you may feel weird about this 
1 over 2, so don't worry about it. It, it will be more apparent why there's a 1 over 2. Uh, but um, the, yeah, so it's really just a scalar. It's a known scalar, so it doesn't affect. Uh, so our whole goal is to look for the theta that gives me minimize the j theta. Yeah, so my goal is the best theta is the one that gave me the minimal loss, minimal cost uh, of j theta. So I'm trying to minimize the j theta to get the best possible theta, theta star. And after you have that theta star, then you can make predictions. It just your, so this is more like, again, training phase. And then in the testing phase, you just use that best theta star to get the predicted FX test on those test samples. All right, so now I'm going to give you a very concrete example. Uh, so it just to give, make it more concrete. Um, so let's see, uh, I'm giving you three points. So one, two, and two, three, and three, four. So this is actually very, very simple. So this is my X feature. So this is xi and yi, and x is just a scalar. So that's why I don't write an arrow on top of the x. So when you have this as giving as your as your training data, it's very easy just for your just plot it, right? So I mean, actually close that comma and make it more a uh, table. Yeah, so this is my X, this is my true Y, and these are just different samples. So this is, this is the S1, S2, S3, and I can immediately just plot it. I can just plot and I can have X axis, Y axis, and uh, very easy. So let me try to change color. Sorry, again. Hmm. If I can do it. Yes, okay, I got it. So um, this is like one, two, three, and it's not totally proportional, but you get an idea. So this is like one, two, three, and four. All right, so my first point S1 is in one, two, right? This give me the first point. And my second point is two, three. And my third point is three, four. Okay, so this are my training data and this is really the best possible data because they are already in you can actually get it really, you can just use eyeball. So what's the best line to fit my training data? Some of you maybe can type there, but it's really just eyeball. You can find the best possible line that predict X to the Y. Yes, totally. But that's just eyeball, right? I want to use this um, this whole thing I just told you. Um, this is my unknown W X plus B. This is my unknown FX, FX function. I do not know W and and um, and B. So I'm given this X Y pair training data. I want to look for a FX equals to 
wx plus b the baseline ever fit my data so you actually can use a uh, linear algebra because two points design the line right but i give you really the best possible case so just in case if i give you this i'm going to fit the the second point i'm going to shift the second point a little bit assuming the prediction is a three sorry so that true y is i want to change it to red color just to make it consistent assuming that sorry again <laughs> so three point maybe three so that uh 3.3 .3, which means it's a little bit up right so it's another point maybe um so let me shift that um blue point into a actually maybe here and when you have this type of three points not this it's actually not easy to just eyeball um but I still want just to show this, uh, just make it easy. So let's again do an easy case because it's much easier to do the gradient later. So I actually will still keep this 3.3, .3, uh, the point. So, but for now, uh, let's see, how do we solve this? Okay, so I have the double XB, right? And now I want to learn W and B. And then how to learn it, and they are argmin j theta. And in my case, actually j, w, and b, right? And then the one give me the smallest minimized j, and it's my best w and my best b. All right, so, so first, then my first thing I need to write it down is uh, what is j, w, b? So I will um, into next page. I think I still have a white page after this. So hopefully if you can do a screenshot, do a screenshot because it's hard for me to go back and forth. I will use my printed uh, note and then to write down JWB. Okay, let's go to the next page. So now we have, um, again, oh, maybe I can write in the previous picture. No, actually no, all right. So we have this xi, yi, um, so which is one, two, two, three, three, four, because I just want to make it easy. So I still use three, not 3.3. 3. So I will just write out my predicted fxi. So which essentially it's y hat, right? Predicted y, y i hat. So what does it look like? Because I do not know W and B, right? So which is W. Um, so the first predicted is just W plus B equals to W X plus B, just to make it more apparent. And then this for the second point, so I feed in the X, which is, please type if you know, uh, this is super easy, but it's good to do, do a dry, just simple run and on paper. So when you have two, you have two W plus B. When you have three, you have three W plus B. All right, so good. So we now have the predicted y and the true y. So now what? So we want to get j, j, w, b. So we want to get that j, w, b, right? That's my loss function. j, w, b equals to what? So let me go, go back to a few slides just to, uh, let you remind you, JWB, so in this one is theta equivalent to one over two, summation from i from one to n, and then taking a square root uh, differences. So essentially in this case is um, WX plus B, XI 
minus yi take a square root and i from one to three i hope you are okay with this equation and we're just representing in the next table view uh, which is w x i plus b minus y i take a square root root so which is the first one is the sorry so w plus b minus two quadratic and the second give me is two w plus b minus three square root a oh, square not square root three w plus b minus four take a square okay so what is my j w b now which is really just a summation of like one over two of all the three together it's actually pretty complicated right if you look at this but if you eyeball it's super easy to get it which means what actually human intuition is actually very very good data fitter and think about we have only three points now if we have 10,000 training data like it's really this this n equals only three p equals only one is already a lot of computation right so one is super large and how do you make this type of calculation efficient and parallelizable it's important and that's actually behind the reason why we don't actually use this plus 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 notation we in fact use some short notations using the matrix and vector type of uh, operation all right so i will tell you later uh, to derive how to minimize this so how to augment how maybe some of you maybe know that please write in the chat so how do i minimize this to get the best WMB. All right, so I will go on. All right, so uh, I think this is, uh, yeah, this is more of a repeated page. Um, so the reason why I want to reshow this is to show you, uh, uh, so virally, what does this uh, square differences mean? So let's look at the R2 case. So this is my true Y and this, point on the plane is my predicted y. What I'm calculating is really the square of those, the distance, y minus y hat, take a square. And you're, then you accumulate all the differences together and then to make that j theta. And I think, yeah, again, to repeat, uh, what is j theta looks like? And uh, this is the same as what I just showed in the previous page. All right, so, so now I need, I will show something pretty dry, uh, but I will not do this derivation because um, you are undergrad level. So I just, I will just show you this and you don't need to understand how to derive it, but I put extra slides showing how to derive this. All right, so we already show you What's the J theta look like? One over two, summation over all the training data. And that area on each training data is the predicted X transposition theta minus Y take a square. And you actually can rewrite this into a much concise form through matrix vector multiplication operations. And this is what you're going to get. And uh, if you're good, uh, you already learned a lot about um, like linear algebra. I'm mean, actually, this is a pretty okay uh, exercise. Just do it by yourself. All right, so I already told you, right? We have a concrete form using that exact example. It's really just sum, sum, sum of all the points, this differences and take a square, but you can write this out as this notation form. And why do we do this? The reason is, so 